and welcome to the Badinari analysis. Today we're going to be looking at the motifs. Uh, I'm going to be analysing the motifs from section A. So first of all, you might be thinking, what is a motif? Well, a motif is a short melodic idea. And I want you to imagine a jigsaw. Uh, when you've got a jigsaw puzzle, you've got lots of little pieces. And when you put all those pieces together, it makes the picture. It's just the same when you're writing a melody. A melody is a lot of motifs put together. So, quite honestly, this whole melody is made up of motifs. In particular, what's really interesting about the Badinari melody is it's really based on two short melodic motifs. So we have this motif, which sounds like this. And we have this motif, which sounds like this. Now, when we're analysing motifs, we like to give them names. It's much easier to analyse. So we're going to call the first one Motif X. So here's Motif X. And the next one is Motif Y. Let's have a listen to Motif Y. Now, what we're going to understand when we're analysing uh, the motifs is how Bach has to use these little jigsaw pieces to make the whole melody and to craft and create the whole of this piece. What we're going to find is he actually reuses a lot of these motifs quite a lot. He repeats them throughout to create his jigsaw of a melody and a piece of music. And also, rather than just constantly repeating them, he actually develops them. He makes them bigger. He modifies them. And of course, it helps to make it more interesting and keep the piece of music fresh. Let's now analyse. So, when we're looking at the melody, we're going to be really focusing on the flute. However, this is the genius of Bach. He does use some of the motifs in other instruments. In particular, he uses it in the basso continuo. Now, the basso continuo is a harpsichord and cello that both play the bass part. So, first of all, let's start analysing the melody. We're going to start off with a flute, and Bach begins the famous melody with motif X, which sounds like this. As he creates this, this brilliant melody, he uses another piece of the jigsaw, which we're now going to call Motif Y. So now we're starting to get a picture of what this melody is. Bach, once again, to make the melody a bit longer, he repeats the first motif, so he's actually repeated Motif X. Now, this is the genius of Bach. Rather than just staying in one instrument, he keeps the music fresh. And to keep the music fresh, he's going to reuse some of the motifs. So we're now going to go to the basso continuo part over here. So here we have a motif. In particular, it's motif X. <laughs> Now we call it Motif X Modified, he's developed it. The reason why we call it Motif X Modified is because instead of ending on a crotchet, as it does in the flute part here and here, he actually ends it with a quaver and two semiquavers, just there. So he's modifying it, he's keeping it fresh, he's actually is actually making it a bit more interesting to listen to. He continues using Motif X. Again, it's modified because it ends with semiquavers. Let's have a listen to this motif. And again, as we know, it ends with two, with, with three, four semiquavers. So already in just a few bars, he's actually created a picture for us by just using two motifs and just developing them and just changing them ever so slightly. 
We're going to move on to the next page as we start to analyse the motif. However, our next motif does begin here. And you might be able to tell from the colour I'm using what motif it could be. It ends here on bar 12, beat 1. And this is motif Y, and it's modified. Let's have a listen to it. Now we call it motif Y modified because it's motif Y, of course, but again, the genius of Bach is he's modifying it, he's developing it, he's changing it. So it's actually ending on four semiquavers. And of course, something like that is just making the music fresh and interesting and keeping the interest of the listener. Our last motif that we're going to be looking at is this one. And it's going to be called Motif Y1. The reason why we call it Y1 is because it sounds, it's very similar to Motif Y. Motif Y uses a lot of semiquavers, as we can see here. However, this motif is extended and developed. We can see it's getting higher in pitch each time. It's longer, it's more interesting, it's virtuosic, it's impressive. Let's have a listen to it. And there are all our motifs that we will find in this piece of music. So now we know we now we know what this sounds like. Now we're able to find them and name them. Let's put it into context. We're going to hear this piece of music and you're going to start to see how these little jigsaw pieces come together and join together to make the picture that is Badineri. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me with our analysis of the motifs of section A. Join me in the next video as we start to analyse the motifs of section B. See you soon.